Well, we're back. Here we are, Tuesday, January 10th, 2012. It's another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We have an incredibly powerful transmission lined up for you this evening. Uh, coming up after the first break, after the news, we're joined by the gentleman just three weeks ago that started the exodus away from the internet registrar GoDaddy that's now set the standard uh, for protesting against corporations that work with governments to restrict free speech. And this gentleman is at the tip of the spear in the fight for liberty. And of course, he was inspired by Infowars.com. I'm just always amazed by how many activists who were having an incredible effect were woken up or expanded their awakening through these media ventures. Thanks to all of you throughout the years that have supported us. That's why we work so hard so that people that love liberty understand we are not alone. In fact, we are the majority, and we are standing up and saying no to the tyrants and that tiny minority that wishes to shudder and control human destiny. Now, we're also going to talk about prostitutes tonight because we're launching a new uh, certification we're going to have here. We're going to have globalist quotes most evenings, but also patriot quotes. And uh, by patriot, I don't even mean from a nation, but those that support human liberty. Uh, but we're also going to start having a prostitute section uh, where we look at prostitutes. Now, a, a case coming up later, though, may not be in the prostitute category. There might be a special, special new category uh, for this individual. So uh, we're going <laughs> to be looking at that coming up, so stay with us. And with that, we'll get into the news because I shouldn't call him a global toot, or a prostitute, he's more of a traitorous toot, or an Obama toot, uh, who poses as a conservatute, uh, and that is uh, Mr. Hunstitute, uh, John Huntsman. Uh, supporters have now admitted that they created racist video to smear Ron Paul that implies that because he has adopted Asian daughters and is the ambassador to China, that he's bad, trying to blame Ron Paul with this. Fox News, CNN all picked it up without actually checking who wrote it, who said it, who made the video. Uh, and and uh, so we have the subheadline: don't believe anonymous internet post unless you're the mainstream media and, and choose to want to do that. And now a consulting firm has done an analysis and says video attributed to Paul supporters probably created by Huntsman operatives. Yes, that's the same uh, finding uh, that we were able to discover as well. Now, I don't have time with this next piece uh, to get into every facet of it, uh, but you all know that the media has made a big issue uh, out of Congressman Ron Paul uh, and the fact that he was in a diner and the 150 media ganged up on him and he was being pressed up against the wall, so he left and went outside. And then uh, the, the assigned CNN mercenary, uh, Miss Bash, came up to him afterwards at another event and said, a lady was going to vote for you uh, until you didn't talk to her. And it's such a junky question, such a distractionary question, uh, that it's just completely mind-blowing. And Ron Paul gets irritated and moves on. So then the media made an issue about that and said, the New York Times said, Ron Paul getting angry. So we thought we'd play you a short clip of Dana Bash uh, Im implying that people were turning against him because he didn't care about people and didn't shake their hand uh, in the streets. Uh, and uh, here's Ron Paul getting irritated by that. But there was a woman there who was a New Hampshire voter. She voted for Barack Obama in the last primary. And she told me that... If she would have been able to just shake your hand and look you in the eye, you would have gotten her vote, but now she's turned off because you do that. Does that does that say anything about your ability to... It says something about the media. Yeah, this is junk. <laughs> this is a junky question. We're stopping. No, 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 no. This, no, no, no. this is junk. We're going to the next one. These are junky questions. Well, yes. Because, because you, question. the media, did that to her. She should have been furious with you. Okay. <laughs> You want to ask good questions? I want to ask about a voter. That, that was absolutely wrong. You saw it because there were 100 reporters just like you and your crew that just crushed that woman. Be fair. Be fair. She said that she's not exactly like Sarah. Group Jenkins with credit. You're part of the same group. We're done. Sorry, sir. So it's important to describe what a prostitute is. They're basically a member of the media that is a complete corporate sellout 
and a mercenary who can be bought for hire to carry out whatever agenda they want. Basically, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, CNBC, they have agendas. Global corporate takeover of America. And so it wasn't enough for Dana Bash to come up and gripe at Ron Paul for no reason, as we just showed you. Next, she took to the airwaves as the reporter for CNN assigned like a piranha or a lamprey fish to tail Ron Paul. She comes on and says, well, Republicans are hoping and I'm hoping that some, you know, he just goes away because he'll discredit whoever the Republican nominee is, because even if Ron Paul does well, everyone knows he can't be elected. More of this mental gatekeeping, telling you who you can have. More of this appeal to authority as if you're just moron, empty sheep uh, who will follow any order you're given. Here it is. Now, for now, obviously, they are very much focused on getting out as many voters to the caucus sites across the state as possible tomorrow. I still am hearing from Republicans, John, who are affiliated with other campaigns that they are amazed at how wonderful, frankly, that they say the Ron Paul organization is. We'll see if that actually uh, bears out tomorrow. Uh, but in terms of the long long term, there's there's no question. I'm sure you talk to Republicans who are worried as well, just like I am, uh, that Ron Paul will continue on long into the uh, into the spring and summer, even further, even if he runs as a Republican or as an independent, he could really hurt whomever the Republican nominee is because still nobody thinks, even if he does well here in New Hampshire, that he will ultimately be the nominee. And I'm sure you talk to Republicans who are worried as well, just like I am, uh, that Ron Paul will continue on, who are worried as well, just like I am, who are worried as well, just like I am, just like I am. Dependent. Okay, so this is all part of this mind control that he can't win, and as he starts to win, first or second place, well, you still can't have him. But for somebody like Miss Bash, her name fits her bashing of liberty. I'm, I'm sorry, she, she does not get the prostitute award. Dude, that's just a mercenary, a sellout. The glee, the relish, because there's a lot of other videos we have of her savaging and, 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 and bird dogging Ron Paul. She gets the Skeksy award that I've only given to Barbara Walters when she attacked me on The View. The Skeksy award is highly prized. Uh, it is for those that really enjoy being mercenaries. They do it for free. So it's beyond uh, the prostitute mercenary level. It is now to a soul-sucking vampiric level. And we happen to have a clip here, uh, well, of Mrs. Bash before she put her makeup on at the CNN trailer and went out to confront Ron Paul. Somebody reached for one of the donuts uh, that she had there on her side bed, and uh, this is what happened. So this is the type of people that are against Ron Paul. This is real video from inside her trailer. Okay, that wasn't really her. She's not that good looking. That's from The Dark Crystal that came out in the early 1980s. Great film. Uh, but uh, shifting into a serious gear, and you can actually pull this up on Yahoo, AP and others uh, have picked it up. This is not a joke. This is not satire. We, we, if once a week, we might have a little tiny sliver of satire, and we'll tell you when it is. This next report is serious. You could not make this up. In fact, show folks my document cam shot, please. Uh, of Yahoo News. Fox News zing CNN, MSNBC on holiday card just like last year. And, and Fox actually put this out publicly on their website, on their corporate site. They sent this as their Christmas card to all the media. And, and, and none of the newspapers or, or publications that reported on this pointed out the real meaning of it. They say, oh, it's making fun of ABC and, C and CBS and MSNBC. You know, it, it, it's implying that Fox is pulling ahead of even the mainline broadcast networks. No, that's not the point. There's three different Christmas cards here. And in it, the media is being drawn by the sheeple, by the sheep. And we'll uh, go to some graphics of that. And it turns out they did this last year. They symbolize their, their viewers that pull the, the sled 
as sheep, uh, as idiots uh, that like mushrooms need to be kept in the dark and fed horse manure. And then there's another one where they're roasting the NBC peacock. And if you go back to that one, it shows the uh, sheep there uh, in the shot on the side of the left and right. And they're saying that people on the left and right are sheep. It's this controlled paradigm. We're the foxes. We're screwing everybody. Oh my God, this is so much fun. And see, if you study criminology, con artists, criminals, the thrill is conning the people. It's not just robbing the bank. It's the excitement of getting away with it. This is basic criminology. Uh, so the Prestitute Award does go to Fox News, selling out to the big mega banks that own them uh, and control them. And to the Saudi Arabian royal family that owns something like 35% of uh, Fox uh, as well. So, yeah, yeah, these are, these are real Christmas cards. Or, uh, Dana Bash is not really a Skeksy, but she is a sellout to the New World Order. And these really are real Christmas cards. You can pull the articles up yourself. So for Fox viewers out there who watch the teleprompter uh, brainwashing channel, the zombie control channel, or any of the other zombie control channels. It gives you lots of flavors of Kool-Aid with cyanide in it and you know, different networks. They think you're sheep. They think you're idiots. They think you're a joke. You know, I noticed years ago, other people, going back five, six years, made jokes about followers of Fox News uh, being sheep, but I guess I guess they actually, maybe Fox put the, those out themselves. I, I don't know. Uh, but there's a, literally a no no end to it. Okay, continuing here with uh, the people that Fox News covers up for. And here's an alternate article. Five things you should know about the FBI's uh, massive new biometric database. And when you get pulled over, it's going in a database. Whatever your neighbors make up about you and reports is put in the database. Uh, face scans, when you get a driver's license photo, it's really a face scan. Put in a global database so that they can uh, track you with face scanning cameras as you walk around the street. They're also getting your retina scans at the salon or at the bookstore, all these places now wanting iris scans. Uh, they've also uh, got the wrap uh, back system uh, that integrates a whole bunch of other data they get from your employers uh, and others and fingerprints. They've got data sharing between agencies and private companies uh, that sell the data you give them uh, without ever uh, telling you that. And they've got the NGI and secure communications uh, and that's all part of, uh, a, 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 of the federalization of local police and having them spying on you as well. So uh, there's that article for you. But separately, the Village Voice is reporting on what we reported on first, Paul Watson at PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com, in February of 2011, about 11 months ago. And then it was in the... We've shown you all these articles here in the past. Uh, it was in the El Paso Times, then Chicago Tribune, and then about six, seven months after that, uh, we see the uh, New York Times come out and basically begin to admit, okay, the DEA, the FBI, the ATF, the Border Patrol, they're laundering not hundreds of millions, but billions of dollars, and they're running the drugs, and they're shipping guns into Mexico to blame it on the Second Amendment, as CBS News admitted. Uh, and, and, but they say this is to understand the drug trade. Folks, $500 billion a year, that's when it's shipped in. It's about three or four times that national profit. $500 billion, $500 billion a year, of drugs is brought in, heroin, cocaine, and other things in this country. Of course the big mega banks are involved, and they've all been caught being involved. Uh, here's part of the Village Voice article. DEA agents got involved in the illegal scheme back in 2007 to infiltrate and take part in drug organizations in Mexico. The agents also helped the kingpin uh, move a big shipment of cocaine through Dallas to Madrid. DEA agents posed as pilots offering to ship cocaine. And, of course, there's a New York Times whitewash on. In fact, click on the New York Times link right there. Because when we can, I'd rather just pull up there. There it is. There it is. And, of course, it's only coming out now because when they bust some of these cartel heads, when local police do, they end up going to trial. They declare national security, and the feds rush in and say, it's all true. Release them, please. So uh, that's what's, in fact, here is that New York Times. Yeah, there's the El Paso Times. You know, I, well, I told you, a few months after us. The El Paso Times reported on it. But if you look it up, Paul Watson actually covered it in February uh, before that. 
I mean, a lot of cocaine, a lot of drugs. And the government's not done with that. I mean, they're going to be criminals. Why not run little kidnapped kids? They use DynCorp for that, who runs CPS in most towns and cities. But people, when faced with something this evil at this magnitude, just can't believe it. Remember I told you years ago about Fast and Furious, before it was even in the news, because of our DEA sources, Selica Steel and others. And, I mean, people have been killed and put in prison over this info. I mean, the system just can't believe my bravada, but it's not bravada. It's they have to be confronted. I'm just committed. It's not confidence. It's commitment. It's not arrogance. It's dedication. I only wish I had more to give to humanity. I only wish I wasn't so weak. I only wish I was a better man and, and, and had a greater mind to present this because I don't have the information, the faculties to even be able to present to you how bad this really is. Now, here's another one. Homeland Security monitors journalists. Specifically, the DHS announced that the NCO of its offices and operations coordination and planning can collect personal information from news anchors, journalists, reporters, anyone else who may use traditional and or social media in real time to keep their audience situated and aware and informed. And they also have a big multi-million dollar contract to record all talk radio and analyze it. So uh, the criminals that have hijacked our nation and wrapped themselves in the flag uh, are attempting to uh, keep tabs on folks. And we're glad you're keeping tabs because all that's happening is your agents who aren't evil are becoming uncompartmentalized and waking up to the big picture. I can't tell you how many military officers, how many feds, FBI, DEA, Border Patrol, uh, different Justice Department, uh, federal marshals send us information uh, that turns out to be accurate over and over again, and who said it never made sense till I heard your show. And then I went and looked it up. It never made sense. Now it all clicks. That's right. Reality does click. That's a good term. Reality clicks. Certainly does. Uh, here's another one. I mean, there's got to be a hundred of these in the last three, four years. Another dim bulb terror patsy nabbed by FBI and even corporate prostitute media has had to uh, basically admit uh, that uh, the latest stooge, a naturalized Yugoslavian who made a video, no doubt at the urging of undercover employees, as they admit, described his desire to take out infidels. The video will undoubtedly make it easy for the government to uh, convict the dim-witted would-be Al-Qaedaite, when our government in the 90s really did give southern Serbia, Kosovo, over to the real Al-Qaeda to run heroin through. They had to have that route uh, into Europe unfettered. And it's over and over again uh, the media even has to admit that they just set up basically idiots who don't even have the means to do it uh, to basically carry out these different types of terror attacks. Now, shifting gears to some of the biggest and most important news uh, of the night. I engineered doomsday is what one publication headline said. And you heard in the last month, oh my God, the Fed stopped a major U.S. university from publishing uh, how they created a weaponized bird flu that would kill more than 90% of the humans it came in contact with. Uh, and the uh, New York Times uh, also uh, ran with a story with a similar headline uh, going over all of that. And uh, what they finally uh, admitted was that it was actually the government that funded this to happen. Let's go, let's read this quote. The most frightening research was done by scientists at the medical center in Rotterdam, who sought to discover how likely it is that a bird flu virus uh, designated H5N1 might mutate to a form that seldom infects or spreads among humans into a uh, form highly transmittable by coughing or sneezing. That's airborne. Thus far, the virus has infected close to 600 humans and killed more than half of them. Some numbers are as high as 90 plus. A fatality rate that far exceeds the 2% rate of the 1918 influenza pandemic that killed 100 million people. A 2% rate, much lower, 100 million dead. And of course, that was actually a bioweapon program. We covered that earlier today. So we're going to have a big special report on the doomsday flu that they may release as part of their eugenics program coming up. This is government funded. Never forget that. Now, uh, we're going to have a couple videos here as we go to break. One of them, and I meant to get to this last week uh, when he died, but uh, went on January 4th, but we ended up making the tribute and then running out of time to air it, so I wanted to properly talk about him. Just a great fighter for basic liberty and freedom. A gentleman that we'd only interviewed once, but I was aware of more than a decade ago. Friends of Willie Nelson, mutual friends. Gate with Galbraith. 
was an American lawyer and author from the U.S. state of Kentucky. He was a five-time candidate for governor of Kentucky, an author, outspoken proponent of marijuana legalization uh, and uh, privacy rights and other civil liberties. In his writing and speeches, Galbraith went into detail on what he termed uh, synthetic subversion. The theories seek to explain how and why America, specifically Kentucky, moved from agricultural agrarian society into an industrial synthetic society. It's all about control. Galbraith claimed that the beginning of uh, the shift can be traced back to the New Deal spearheaded by Franklin Roosevelt's administration. Up until the 30s, America and Kentucky relied solely on agriculture to fuel the economy. Galbraith argued that out of necessity, Roosevelt shifted America towards a more industrial synthetic society fueled by alliances with greedy corporations. Gatewood uh, died in his sleep due to complications from emphysema. Um, so we're going to play a little clip from him on the radio show last year. And uh, you can see the whole thing at PrisonPlanet.tv or on our YouTube channel for free. And then we have a very touching video of a group I know is doing a lot of good work with meager funds. Uh, and a lot of people like to demonize the Muslims or anybody with brown skin and say they deserve to die. There's a lot of videos of troops shooting kids and laughing and killing dogs and laughing. And people say the dogs are Al-Qaeda, the kids are Al-Qaeda, they all deserve it. Uh, but th these are just some of the little kids that you need to look at and understand what war is really all about. Those of you that haven't been involved in it and think it's so sexy and powerful, this is the No More Victims group. And we'll have their website, nomorevictims.org, if you want to check that out and try to donate to help these children. I'm all for wounded warrior programs because the VA won't help the troops. They're too busy stealing all the money. But you also should help the kids. It's over a million dead Iraqis. But the walking dead, the walking wounded, those, the birth defects, the DU that our troops are now experiencing with their children, it's all part of the wages of sin, the wages of preemptive war. The wages of empire is enslavement and impoverishment for all of us. And for those of you that laugh at these little Iraqis, because I know you will, a lot of you think it's really sexy to kill little kids, don't worry, you'll all get it repaid to you in spades by your own sick life. I wouldn't want to be somebody like you, like a moth attracted to evil. Uh, I don't know who you are, but I know you're out there. I, I, I don't understand you, but I do, do understand you're a cockroach. Uh, so we'll go to that video as well and come back with our interview of somebody truly taking action. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. I decided to go to college, become an attorney. And while I was going to do that, I was going to become governor of Kentucky and lift Kentucky out of poverty by changing the marijuana laws. So that was in 1971. I've gotten up every day for the last 40 years to do exactly that. I became an attorney. Uh, I have tried to change marijuana laws, but other states have beat us to it. I was going to you know, try to revitalize Kentucky's economy over it. It looks like we still may be able to, but I've run for office on various occasions. But what's happening is that we're being taken over by the people I call the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite, SOBs, <laughs> you know, who've never said the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America or to the republic for which it stands, and they're not warm and fuzzy about you and me or our children or grandchildren, and they see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as impediments to the implementation of a new world order and global economy. I just said, I'm not getting my child and my family, and I, I just enjoyed it in the war, so I had to come here for the surgery. And so tell me, what, what happened? Why did you need surgery? Because I, on my head, because I got shot. And who shot you? I want to get people. The bullet entered right there right there and out or here. She, she, when the bullet enter at, the, at her brain, explosion, the bullet explosion and broken all the spawned. If you could talk to the soldier who shot you, what would you say to him right now? Just go ahead and pretend he's here and tell him. I say, why well, you shoot me? That's not true. <laughs> I do not do anything. I just had my doll. I'll get it in my hand. I say, why you shoot me? I'm a girl. I'm little, but why you shoot me? What? What? 
Since 2003, No More Victims has brought children who were injured by American forces to the United States for medical treatment. The children were treated in communities all across the country, from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine, from Orlando, Florida to Orange, California. A blinded three-year-old recovered her eyesight after treatment in Florida. Today, she is learning to read. After an American bomb disfigured five-year-old Abdul Hakim's face, he was too ashamed to go to school. No more victims brought him to Pittsburgh for facial reconstructive surgery, and now he's back in school, one of the top students in his class. Six-year-old Mustafa had been in excruciating pain for four years after an American missile destroyed his leg and left him with severe internal injuries. No more victims brought Mustafa and his father to Portland and after life-saving treatment he is pain-free for the first time since the missile strike. Each community of care tells a story of a different kind of America. An America that knows war is the problem, not the solution. War is destroying the American economy and with it the American dream. We must end the wars now and bring the troops home. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our grandchildren, and we owe it to children like Nora. But Nora, she's a lucky girl because she <coughs> she's a miracle. All the doctor told me, Nora, a miracle, and she's a lucky because she's still alive until now. Yeah, maybe God sent this miracle to United States to lead the people of United States to see what the war do with the people, with the kids. The, the war, it's worse thing, worse thing in this world. Which one? This one or this one? It's time for America to come home. Most Americans want to end these wars. If we work together, we can do it. Please help. Visit nomorevictims.org. And we're back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this next story ties into a whole bunch of really important issues. A, it shows what one individual can do when they take action. Sometimes, in just a few days, they can have one of the biggest stories in the United States and in the Western world by simply speaking out against uh, groups and organizations that are promoting less freedom, and in this case, namely, on the internet. And it also helps illustrate the type of attempts that we see out there to uh, shut down the freedom that we have seen on the Internet. In fact, we have an article here from just a few weeks ago where the 80 inventors of the Internet, not Al Gore claiming he invented it, uh, but the actual inventors of the Internet on record, Nobel Prize winners, you name it, coming out and saying the SOPA bill is the end of the Internet as we know it. And we've already gone over what it does, the different ways it attacks freedom of speech, shutting down your websites without court orders, uh, delisting orders, uh, you name it. Here's a quote. Censorship of the internet infrastructure will invariably cause network errors and security problems. Uh, and they go on to say this is the communist Chinese and Iran model that is being set up here in the United States. And uh, when he called into the show today, he sounded credible, but I had to go actually look it up for myself. And sure enough, uh, his email, his handles, it uh, matches the original Reddit post that's credited by Fox News, Associated uh, Press, uh, and Ars Technica, and uh, others. Uh, he'll just go by Frederick because he has a successful um, internet IT consulting company. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, Frederick uh, went and posted on Reddit and, and on, on other sites that he was tired of it, uh, that GoDaddy was supporting... Uh, the SOPA bill, when almost no one else is. They even got copyright trolls in the news I saw today saying this will kill free speech and won't even help shut down copyright violation. And so he went after them. And here we are three weeks later. Uh, I've seen numbers as high as 100,000 people that have left or didn't sign up with one of the biggest domain registrars, uh, GoDaddy. But what's important here, and he'll tell you the story, but I'm just giving you a boil down synopsis here, was at first they're like, we don't care, do whatever you want. Very quickly, within a matter of days, as tens of thousands left, something happened. They said, okay, we won't support it now. 
but the Exodus continues. So it's an example of a David versus Goliath. Now, Frederick didn't just put out the emails and the Facebook and the Twitter and the Reddit. He also helped himself, hundreds and hundreds of people over the next few days, begin the initial uh, Exodus. So it's another example of the corporate Borg always telling you you don't have power. When the system starts violating your rights or you see different groups doing things like this, you simply need to speak out. Your voice is powerful. If it wasn't, they wouldn't have all these sock puppet programs posing as humans. They wouldn't have all these PR firms manufacturing consent, to use a Noam Chomsky term. Uh, so uh, it's just amazing. And I'm proud that Frederick's been a 10-year listener to my syndicated radio show. I can't tell you how many times we see great people across the world standing up for liberty, and they are listeners of our show. But I stand on the shoulders of others that came before me as well. So uh, it is uh, just absolutely fantastic. And we're joined by Frederick via Skype. Frederick, great job. So recap the story, and then let's get into what you've launched is now spurring other movements, people seeing uh, your success, it's giving people confidence. Yeah, it was really um, a chain of events. And before we get into it, I just want to stop and say that I may have lit the match, but Reddit, the community, and the people as a whole were really the ones that brought this about. But it was just one person that planted the idea that it, it just kind of picked up and took off like wild. Yeah, no, you were the first person to knock over the domino. There was one guy who said slavery was wrong thousands of years ago, and then it took until the last 300 to start eradicating it. But I mean, my point is, it's an example of other people out there like you believing that they have power and knowing they have power. Yeah, and you know, the thing about it too is they really got under my skin because I've given them thousands of dollars of business over the years, and I was almost betrayed when I saw that they were the only internet company on that list that supported this bill. Uh, and when I called, I got a very blasé response, and it was, we don't care, and have a nice day. And I transferred my domains out, and I put the idea out there and said, hey, we should make December 29th a day where we, we all move our domains. And what ended up happening was people didn't wait for the day. They just started doing it immediately. And people came into the community, started asking questions. I was there helping them, but many, many other people took the call to help as well. And even some of the other registrars took opportunity and came in and started offering deals um, for people that were coming off of GoDaddy and made public statements that they would never support this kind of legislation. And then once that happened, um, some big names came out. Uh, the founder of Wikipedia said that he was going to pull his domains away from GoDaddy. The guy who started the, the cat movement, he has over a thousand domains. He said he was going to pull his. Even Ashton Kutcher got on Twitter and started tweeting about it. And he's got nine million people that follow him. And before all that happened, GoDaddy came out in their very arrogant fashion and said, you know, listen, uh, we got a few emails. The, the boycott isn't really hurting our bottom line or, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but something to that effect. And Ars Technica posted it and it was like throwing kerosene on the fire. All of a sudden, everyone was like, oh, OK, so you don't think we can have an impact. And everyone just, you know, came together as a group and started pushing it out. Um, and. One of the things that, that bothers me today now is we have somebody like Lamar Smith, who started this bill, coming out and saying that, oh, well, it's a very small amount of people and they don't really have any impact and there's no legitimacy to what they're saying. I watched the House Judiciary Committee. I watched this guy try to ramrod the bill through before Christmas time. And as I watched, I just got more and more angry. And I know that it's a technical issue. Most people don't understand the content, but if uh, Facebook and Google and all these other big media or all these other big companies do a blackout as they're threatening, they're going to wake a lot of people up. And I, I don't know, personally, I think you got the movie industry and the recording industry feeding Congress all of this money, and you don't really have the tech companies lobbying. So, well, that's because the recording industry is, is trying to use a hammer. Uh, you know, to arrange some roses. 
or, or, or they're trying to use a hammer to change a record, you know, on a turntable. They're, they're smashing everything up. It's like the last senator, he's dead now, with Stevens out of Alaska, saying the Internet's a bunch of tubes. I mean, they don't know what they're doing. Not only are they trying to censor it and, and, and trying to violate due process, uh, but when, you, when the 80 inventors of the Internet come out and say, this is going to screw the Internet out, I mean, I've seen one top-tier Internet company go out and a third of the web you can't get to for a week. What, when Level 3 or whatever had a problem five, six years ago. I mean, this is going to absolutely hammer the Internet like a bull in a china shop. And yeah, when Google and Yahoo and all these establishment groups come out and say it's horrible, people better know this is super bad. Yeah, th there's a couple things I want to note too. I don't know anybody who's come out and said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm for piracy and stealing. Uh, none of these groups want to see intellectual property stolen. In fact, if you look at Google, I think in the past year they had 5 million plus uh, DCMA takedown requests and their average response time was a few hours. Uh, how could you ask them to do any better than they're doing now? And this this bill would basically make a, you know a, a thirteen year old on YouTube singing their favorite song a, a criminal, and it's just it's too much. And and, um, and 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 you don't have the due process. That's the other big one. Is that it's just all rammed through as a way to censor. It'll be selectively enforced. It's a nightmare. It's the Patriot Act of the Internet. It's and it's it's one of the two. Um, the other one, and I, I think it's important that we don't forget about it because I know that SOPA is getting a lot of attention, but the Protect IP Act is already in the Senate. Um, so, you know, I, I don't just, you know, uh, go and, and encourage boycotts and go after the, the people that are supporting it. I, I do call senators. I, I do write letters. I do write emails. And, you know, a lot of the times it might sound like it's going on deaf ears. But if you continually call and you bombard their phones and you get enough people to do it, you will you will catch their attention. Well, I know uh, you've been following this, Frederick, really closely. Uh, where is the SOPA bill right now? Where's the IP Act, the Intellectual Property Act as well? Because I'm told it's on a knife's edge which way it's going to go. Yeah, it really is. There, uh, the SOPA, last time I checked, it was in the, the Judiciary Committee was trying to bring it forward and and they keep on quoting that they need to get the nerds in there to talk about it um which i don't really think is a great term to use um but you know here's here's one point i want to make you know my my grandmother's in her 60s and she barely understands the internet and the average age in congress is around 60 and when you listen to these people talk about the bill that's in front of them they don't understand what they're doing they have no clue and the definitions that they're using they use them wrong many times and they have no idea what they're talking about there are a few senators that were out there there was a, a democrat from california that was asking for you know let's bring in a couple third parties let's bring in some some experts to testify on it but the protect ip act is much further along in the senate and to tell you the truth i haven't checked on it but i think somewhere around january 22nd or something they're, they're coming back into sure to, to, to let me expand on this uh, it came out a year ago that Obama has already agreed to sign on to the, quote, secret international copyright treaty, which basically mirrors SOPA. So this is global. This is affecting everybody. It's a plan. You're right. They don't fully understand it. But the technocrats that originally wrote it up for them know that it allows them to basically selectively ban IPs, do, do uh, take down orders across the web of search terms, shut people down for using certain copyright words. Uh, as you said, as a lot of analysts have pointed out, a kid sings a song. Just the words, they can go to jail. Uh, it turns the Pentagon loose uh, to operate in cyberspace against people. Uh, this is an old establishment. And I know a lot of, I mean, I, I have an IT operation. I mean, it's, it's 90%, you know, internet based and delivered. We're on a bunch of AM and FM, but it's all originally around the internet. And I've been here doing this 16, 17 years. I have a bunch of IT people. I try to study it and I know nothing compared to an IT person. I mean, I'm an idiot. And compared to these senators watching these hearings, they don't know their head from a hole in the ground. 
I mean, they don't know a bit and a bite, you know, from from kibbles and bits. I mean, they have no idea, and that's allowing the recording industry and uh, you know the old media that, that's threatened by the new media to try to bring a new dark age in over the web. Now, I want to uh, uh, get your take on that, but then I want to expand into how your move that inspired so many others is now leading to a chain reaction of others becoming empowered and standing up against other arrogant companies. Oh yeah. Um Almost immediately after, they're in the same Reddit community, they started looking and they started evaluating what representatives um, would support this bill and how can we support their opposition. Um, unfortunately, Lamar Smith and the district that he's in in Texas, he's considered almost untouchable. Nobody's going to beat him because there's a lot of old time, you know, good old boys down there that support anything the guy does. Um, but they, they have started selectively picking out candidates that they said, Oh, well, we're going to money bomb, uh, your opponents and we're going to, to make an impact. And it was really like a, a realization that they, they have an effect. Um, which I think was probably the, the best part about it. Um, I don't agree with everything that they're doing. I think they picked the wrong candidate to go uh, go after personally, but uh, I do like the fact that they are trying and they are um, starting to come together more. Exactly. People are taking action and getting out of their mind stupor uh, out of their trance. That's why resistance is victory, because then you learn as you fight. But take Lamar Smith. His district runs right up to South Austin. And I know him well. He always poses as this libertarian conservative. Nightmare legislation flows continually. He's one of the people the establishment goes to to bring in really nasty bills. And I know there are some folks locally who are actually uh, planning on uh, running against him. And so some really exciting things uh, are starting uh, to happen. Uh, but... Uh, Again, please continue with 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 your overall view of where this is going after you finish uh, on uh, other things that are being inspired by what you and others have done. Um, well, hopefully this uh, this is encouraging other people to say, you know, I, I'm one person and I had an idea and the community ran with the idea. And this is something Ron Paul talks about all the time. Um, I'm, you know, I'm kind of sad on one end that uh, at the end of this, if he doesn't become president, he's not going to be in the house anymore. But on the other hand side, he talks about ideas outliving people and, you know, he's really running on the idea and getting more people behind him than ever. Um, and, yeah, no, and it's about a philosophy. It's about a spirit of liberty and alternative to tyranny and collectivism. And that's why he runs. Even if he loses, he wins. We get the word out. We win. We move the ball down the field. In this modern mind control system, uh, they want to teach you uh, that, that, you know, if you don't win the whole thing like Rambo at the end of the movie, you failed. That's not how life really works. Yeah, exactly. Um, and... You know, I, I happen to know, regardless of, of what the media is doing right now, with, with I mean, SOPA, they were paying almost as much attention to it as they were, um, you know, Ron Paul. I haven't actually seen a lot of talk on the dinosaur media about about the bills or the acts or what it's going to do. And, you know, the only time I ever read it is online. And unfortunately, um, I think more people no need to know about it and it needs to be brought in a way that, that they can understand. So I'm really hoping that these, these internet companies do the blackout because if the, if the people go to log into Facebook and they get a big black message saying that, you know, the SOPA bill is preventing you from logging in, I think it'll have a huge effect because all of a sudden they'll see that some of the communities they like to frequent are no longer available. And I mean, Reddit would never be able to exist with something like this because if somebody posted something that violated this bill, before they have a chance to take it down, they could just pull the whole website down. So it's smashing innovation um, to, to fight something that, by the way, they can't stop. So even if they pass this bill, the people that know how to pirate things, the people that are intelligent will go out and get you know, small private uh, VPNs, will know how to get around these... these and by the way, you're and not just saying this. We've already seen... It's got to be in the tens of thousands of cases, because in some cases it's tens of thousands of sites at once. 
There'll be one song on a popular service that, you know, where people put alternative music and authorize it that they claim is copyrighted. In, in the case a few months ago, it turned out it wasn't. And they shut down a site with millions of users, uh, or the feds will go in and grab a whole server farm of 15, 20,000 websites for one MP3 of a pirated song or a clip of a movie. And I mean, it seems like the feds aren't just tyrants. They're crazy as well. They'll just come in and shut down an entire IT you know, farm uh, be because there was one thing out of 10 billion things, literally, that they said might be copyright as part of an investigation. I mean, if they, they couldn't be turning the world against them quicker. Yeah, and you know, the other thing, and I know you've, you've hit on it before, if they have the censorship where they can, they can block InfoWars and call it hate speech or whatever they want to label you as, um, they could do it to anybody. You know, they, they can come and get me in the morning, but they're going to come and get you at the night. So don't think you're, you're safe because you're, you're following the system or you're toting the rules. You know, I don't have anything to hide. I'm not pirating material. And when I try and talk with people about this and I say, well, the Stop Online Piracy Act is going to hurt your freedoms online, they immediately go, well, you know, are you against stopping piracy? No, but we already have tools in place to do it. It's just like gun laws. We don't need more gun laws. We can enforce the ones we have. They don't need to keep stacking them on the books. And that reminds me, there was a very important uh, quote that one of the House members made. His name slips me, but one of the things he said was, when they were talking about how we already have DCMA to handle these complaints, he said, well, um, you know, it's okay to have repetitive legislation. It doesn't hurt anybody. If it's already out there, it's not going to hurt to pass another bill. I mean, come on. You know, they, they couldn't be further from, from reality. Look, inventors of the internet, the main poobahs, Google, all of them have said this. I've read it. It attacks it from so many angles. They're openly pushing censorship. In closing, in just a minute or two, uh, give us any of the uh, sites we can visit to learn more about what you're doing, A, and B, what has uh, Pimp Daddy's response been uh, since uh, you and others exposed them? I know they've got ads all over the place. They've, they've still tried to claim it's no big deal, uh, so they're really trying to spin this. So in closing, uh, how are they responding now two, three weeks into this? Uh, well, you know, uh, within 24 hours, when almost 30,000 domains were transferred, they said that they would no longer support the bill until the Internet community supported it as well. And I think they were just trying to stop the amount of domains being transferred out. Hopefully they stand by their word. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath. This this company, if you do a little bit of research on them, and I never knew this, the former CEO used to go out and shoot elephants. I, I'm not making it up. You can look it up. But you can watch the video, and then he's got the whole tribe wearing GoDaddy hats. Yeah. Like, I mean, like he's so disconnected, whether it's right or wrong, he thought that that would be a good sales pitch. Yeah, like, who wants to see that, that type of brutality? I mean, I, I'm for hunting. I'm for guns. I'm in a, a concealment. Yeah, but you're not eating state. elephants. It's, it's pure yeah. trophy crap. Yeah, it's, it's pure trophy, and, you know, he's standing on top of it, and he's got a, a bunch of starving people around him wearing his company hat. I mean... My customers would crucify me if I did that, you know? Um, so hopefully the, the, the best thing that the people can do is call their senators and their House members, even if the bill hasn't made it there yet, and continue to do so. Because a lot of the, the House members that haven't even heard about this yet don't know what's going on. So you're probably going to get the woman in the office or the guy in the office that's, you know, in an internship. Be nice to them. Tell them your position. Tell them why you you know you don't support it, and and tell them you know if you vote for it, I I won't support your candidate ever again, and I'll I'll go for his opposition. Look for third parties, uh, run against them. You know, grow exactly it. because this entire world is going to be internet based. It pretty much already is, and this is the end of the free internet as we know it. That's a fact. And if they get away with this, there'll only be more. Frederick, I hope to talk to you as this develops. And I'm honored that you're a listener of the show. And you're an info warrior you're out there doing big things. And I hope others uh, you know, use your example and uh, basically lead with it. Thanks for spending time with us. Thanks, uh, Alex. It was an honor. It was an honor talking to you. Wow, very exciting. Another info warrior out there taking action. And he's inspired countless others. 
and then they're going to inspire others. The only time that evil men can triumph is when good people do nothing. And uh, this SOPA bill and the rest of it, uh, I mean, you've got the White House regulations are saying they want to censor the Internet three years ago. They're trying to do it with taxes and regulations and everything else. It's the only part of our economy that actually keeps this country going. It's all America's got left. It's all we're innovating, pretty much. I mean, it's a joke that they're trying to basically throw monkey wrenches into it. And it's a combination of old media threatened by new media uh, and the recording industry, a bunch of stupid politicians. Uh, and I agree with Frederick. We need to have the blackout day where we just shut the internet off uh, through the different parts of it and show people what this system would do incrementally. See, that they love taking down stuff slowly. But by actually showing people what it will do long term, we can bring these globalists to their knees and have another example of the power of the people. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We're going to leave you uh, with a little video breaking down what's happening with Ron Paul. And Lord willing, we'll see you back tomorrow on the radio, 11 a.m. Central, and here with InfoWars Nightly News and InfoWarsNews.com. And you can also subscribe and do the 15-day free trial to support true alternative uh, media and internet freedom as well. And then, of course, we also then post it for free on YouTube and many other platforms where millions of people in the aggregate see this show a week, thanks to those of you that do subscribe, paying it forward. All right, I'm Alex Jones signing off. Great job of the crew. See you back tomorrow. America is in trouble. Washington is a disgrace. Government has become too big. It's overtaxing, overspending. We need to change direction. We really need change. We can't afford to make the same mistakes we've made in the past. Mitt Romney's reputation as a flip-flopper. He went the other way when he got paid to go the other way. There is need for economic stimulus. It's about serial hypocrisy. This election is about trust. There's been one true consistent candidate, and that's Dr. Ron Paul. Ron Paul has been so consistent from the very beginning. He seems like a more honest candidate. He tells the truth about what he believes, whether you like it or not. He's never once voted for a tax increase, never once voted for an unbalanced budget. Ron Paul's plan is bold, cuts five departments. It's what we need. When he says he's going to cut a trillion dollars in the first year, I believe it. If you don't like how things are going and you're tired of politicians, he's something different. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Is the one we've been looking for. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.